stop for a moment. Yes. Gentlemen, this is the captain again. I hope you've enjoyed your flight with Britannia Airways. And I hope also that you enjoy your holiday on Lanzarote. And special good wishes to the members of the British Olympic Association down here for training prior to the Summer Olympic Games. For the athletes, the fast approaching island is only a stepping stone in the sea to the place in the sun they're really chasing, Los Angeles. But for now, for Olympians and holidaymakers, Lanzarote will do very nicely. This man is training for his sixth Olympic Games, training some of Britain's best athletes. Wolf Paish was in Tokyo, Mexico, Munich, Montreal and Moscow as national coach with the British Olympic team. Now an official outcast, his presence will probably be felt even more in Los Angeles. What motivates the man? Well, firstly, to try to help people and try to make them the best athletes in the world, because by doing that, I can prove that I'm one of the best coaches in the world. And as you know, my career was checkered for a short while, and I want to prove to them that I am one of the best coaches in the world. And you can't do that by sticking at one event. You've got to continually to produce top-class athletes in a wide spectrum of events, and that's precisely what I try to do. I mean, looking at your squad now, there is such talent in it across the board in all sorts of different events. I mean, do you feel tempted to put two fingers up, in a way? Uh, an yeah. establishment? Well, uh, I, I do it permanently, but not visually, so that everyone can, can see me. But uh, uh, one has to go along with the uh, administrative structure that's there, and hopefully that sometime they might take me back into the fold, but I think by that time the Olympic movement or I will have finished. Now that I can be selective and choose who I want, then uh, somehow it's athletes that gravitate towards me, whether they're men or women, and I just enjoy working with those people. Uh, if I don't enjoy working with them, well, they don't stay very long, because I make it quite pointed that, you know, they're not quite so welcome. Left! No. You've got to know the person, get very close to them. And I can only work if I get very close to my athletes. I know, I know when things are wrong, the instant they come to a training session, I can pick out whether they're going to have a good session or a bad session, whether they feel right, whether they look ill, uh, whether they need even doctor's treatment. Uh, you, you, you know, it's a wonderful field of communications with psychology, all linked into one. Come on, right through, Sue, hold it. Come on, it's fast. Come on, last. Brilliant. Good lass. As part of the 200 strong British squad, Wilf and his group have travelled 2,000 miles towards the equator, not just for the sun, but because the La Santa Sports Complex has everything they need. Most importantly, a 400 metre tartan track, identical to the one in the Olympic Coliseum in Los Angeles. It's a wonderful place to come for uh, training, as we've done. The weather's been very kind to us. The facilities are just out of this world and an ideal preparation for an Olympic Games. Wolf's gang of 17, all from Yorkshire and Humberside, represent future as well as present hopes. The next batch of headline grabbers are already on Pace's production line and very much part of the team. But with rare talents like Peter Elliott, the young man set to take over from Seb Coe and Tessa Sanderson, one of the world's best javelin throwers in his group, Wilf shoulders huge responsibilities. They may appear carefree, but never far below the surface is the real reason for the trip, the pursuit of athletic excellence. We've spent uh, a winter uh, doing quite a lot of indoor work, endurance work, strength work, and now we really need to sharpen up. And we, this is the ideal sort of uh, uh, climate that you can just strip down into vests and shorts and just perform uh, with a nice temperature, only a cool breeze to prevent you from getting sunburn. You start to take on a new dimension. You start to get brown, your muscles start to stand out a little bit. You look good, you feel good, and you are good. Your right leg turn there. Discus to the front. Quite nice. Super love. Well done. Good. 
you, and you can't show favours on any of them. You know, there are differences of ability within the group, but I wouldn't show favourite to any one of them at all. And you treat the whole lot different, because they are all different people. You know, what sort of joke one can take, what sort of joke another can take, when one has to be serious, when you, you have to be serious with another one. It's, they're all totally different, and that, and that is the tremendous challenge, just the fact that they are different people. That's why you'll have trouble with that spear. Though. I wouldn't take a, an athlete on if I wouldn't be happy to have them living in my home with me permanently. That's the sort of relationship I want with them. And uh, I'll, I'll just do anything for them. And they know that. And uh, I think that's, that, that's why it's such a very, very loyal group. I'm loyal to them. They're totally loyal to me. It's tremendous value. It's a long way. I then. think Wilf's main value is his tremendous motivation and his tremendous qualities as a communicator. He can really motivate athletes to get the best out of themselves. You know, it's a hard sport. It's a lonely sport. Plus, I think he sets a good example. I mean, he's no spring chicken now. Don't tell him I said so. Gets out there and he throws the shot with him and he throws the javelin. And athletes respect that kind of leadership from the front. A little genius in a little packet. That's how to describe him. Is he really very important to you? Oh, very important. Wilf. Will you can say almost, he's like my second father. Wilf Pesh. Wilf is something different. Um, somebody you can have total confidence in. He's a very good coach. That program is just about the best in the country. It doesn't matter what event it is. He knows, he knows everything about it. He's always there to, to bully you up if you're feeling down. And he's always telling you what you can do. And uh, I think he gives you that much and that often that eventually you believe it yourself and do it. He's known in the sport as The Man. Born 52 years ago in the Cotswolds, he was a fair middle distance runner, but a far better coach. So good that the Amateur Athletic Association persuaded him to become a full-time professional in 1963 and gave him the north of England to control from Leeds. Wilf's never been a diplomat, always joining with, if not leading the athletes in their rows with officialdom. And when, four years ago, he was told to teach teachers and coach coaches instead of athletes, he resigned. Since then, he's been based at Leeds Polytechnic's Carnegie School as senior lecturer in physical education. But every lunchtime, every evening and every weekend, he devotes to his athletes. The sport's purists and idealists should be thrilled. In an age when athletics has gone commercial, one of its legitimate professionals has been forced to revert to amateur. He sometimes even has to pay at the turnstiles to see his athletes compete. But this is a vintage crop even for Wilf, and their achievements provide all the reward he seems to need. Tessa Sanderson, British record holder in the Javelin, who's moved to Leeds from Wolverhampton to be near her coach. Tessa, well, um, you, you know, I've worked with Tessa a long time now. Tessa is a super girl with probably about the most natural talent you could ever wish for in any one uh, athlete. She is outstanding and I, I think that there is a genuine chance of a medal, if not a gold medal. I think Tessa can throw 80 metres this year without any real problems. And considering that she's doing that on top of having had both of her Achilles tendons operated on, then, it, you know, it takes a tremendous amount of courage to come back with that sort of... Um, uh, uh, scar on on your body and the sort of weakness that it's bound to create and that is one of the problems at the present moment is that I can't really work her as hard on the legs as I would like to work her because uh, you you know I, I always feel well look they're looking so ugly they're looking so tender are they likely to break down and I would hate to work her so hard that they broke down so that we didn't even make it but Tessa, tremendous ability and a, a super friend. She spends a lot of time at the house as part of the family. And uh, if she's got her problems, she talks them over with my wife instead of myself. He knows everything about me. And um, we are very, very close, um, both coach and, and athletes. And I think it's something that an international athlete, whatever athlete should have, you know, the closeness with their coach. He knows when I've got my off days and... All sorts of things like he's very, very, very important. And so's this joiner with British Steel. He's only 21, but already Peter Elliott is recognised around the world as a middle distance phenomenon. He frightens me now because uh, really he's he's about the best and the most talented athlete that I've ever had uh, with me. Uh, that that is in a running event because Tessa is equally talented, but Peter certainly has a very, very special quality that. 
um, uh, you're very lucky if you get someone like this in your total coaching career. Very, very lucky. That means I rate him in the same sort of terms as Sebastian Coe or um, Steve Ovid, any one of those, and that the times and the performances he's doing now are really just outstanding. He's got the right sort of personality, the right sort of temperament. The good Lord has left nothing out of Peter Elliott. Peter's a dedicated trainer, but he's not obsessed or blinkered by the sport. He appreciates there are other things in life. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Uh, Peter knows exactly how to control himself. He's one of the boys. He's a tremendous sense of humour. And I feel that any great athlete needs that f f sort of relaxation. And it can only do them good. Just training all of the time, worrying about your race, etc. doesn't do you any good at all. I've come across far too many athletes with similar sort of potential who have not achieved their potential purely because of that. They become totally absorbed in their sport, have no outlets at all. Whereas Peter has these outlets, and thank God he has got them, because I know that ultimately it's going to make him a better athlete, not a poorer one. A lot of, a lot of athletes are really cracked because they're just sitting out, sort of reading books on what other people are doing and noticing what peak times people are doing and things like that. Whereas I don't read what others are doing. I just sort of go down to a race meet, and if they're there on the track, they're there to be beaten. I just get on with that. Come on, Pete, last one! Come on, Pete, hold it out. Last one. Well done, Steve. Well done, all of you. All right. Yeah, through bed, down there, through. I heard bed, will he? Okay. Sue Morley is Britain's number one 400 metres hurdler. She's now on the dole as one of the country's few full-time athletes so that she can train even harder. Sue uh, is, a, is a tremendous athlete. Her asset is that she is the hardest worker that you could ever want to uh, meet. We're making the absolute best of any um, uh, natural ability that she has. So from now onwards, it's really on hard, guts-breaking work. And there she is, the tops. On your marks. Set, go! Come on, Sue, push it, lass. Come on. Come on, lass. Push it out. If some of our other athletes trained at the level that Sue trained at, they would really be truly world class. So that's Sue's asset, and she's a lovely girl as well. I'm not basically a, an exceptionally talented person, and so I have to do the work. Um, to get up there. No, I'm not running off talent, I'm running off work. No. The pain is there. You just shut it out of your mind as much as you possibly can. When you're really on form, it's just like flying. It's fantastic and that's what we do it for, that feeling. Sport, though, can be unpredictable. Last year, Steve Soul of Sheffield was Britain's top man over the one-lap hurdles. This year, inexplicably, his confidence, so crucial at the highest level, is at low ebb. Steve, again, has tremendous talent, and I, my main job now is to try to convince him that he's got this sort of talent to be one of the best in the world. I know what he can do because I see what he does in training, and Steve is capable of breaking the British record, which is a very good time, at any time now that he wants to go out. That'll give him all the confidence that he needs. I'm, I'm a bit... Lacking in self-confidence, really, and that's where Wolf helps me a great deal. He sort of tells me, you know, from what training I'm doing and how I'm performing in training, what I can do in competition, and eventually that sort of comes through and uh, I can do it. Wolf Page, even with the help of a psychiatrist, has not succeeded this time. Come on, Steve, break through, come on! Come on. One of our most physically talented athletes will be watching the Olympics from home. I'm a natural athlete, and... Um, I've gotten as far as I've got without the aid of drugs, and I think I can get farther still without it. 
I certainly know that none of the group I'm taking at the present moment uh, have uh, ta tampered with drugs at all. But I feel that if I had a really heavy thrower, a male thrower uh, in the group, then it's something that they would have to consider and then uh, take up with, um, with doctors or whoever the powers might be. Because I know that at world level, it is unlikely that you can ever get to the level of performance that is necessary in this present day and age without uh, relying upon some form of ergogenic aid. It's not necessary in the javelin event. I think it's only in the heavy events, the shot, the discus and the hammer, where these are uh, really of any benefit. I'm convinced that you can get uh, a gold medalist without resorting to drugs, and I wish thousands of others would appreciate that. I've seen people who are supposed to be on steroids and gone down in their performance, something drastic. You know, so it's all sort of, it, I, a lot of it is talk, and a lot of these women who are taking it look more like he men than women. And I definitely don't really want to look like that. What's the point in probably taking 20 or 30 years off somebody's lifespan? I wouldn't recommend those sort of things to my own family, and so why should I recommend them to, uh, to my own athletes? But Wilf and Tessa know there are scientists working now to perfect harmless, non-detectable drugs. Would the answer still be no? When it comes, I'll think about it. But at the moment, not thinking about anything like that at all. Just LA? Just Los Angeles and August the 6th. I think that's the date of the final. Tessa has a day to aim for, but has this marathon madame from York. Veronique Marot is first reserved for the 26-mile race. After running so far to be so near yet so far away, her ambitions are not dented. I think I've got it. I mean, may not break a world record because that's quite a long way away, but be amongst the fastest five in the world. Yeah. I take it you need the support in, in your sport with all the hours that it involves of, of your husband? Yes, I think as he says, he kicks me out of bed <laughs> to go <out> running. <laughs> More than that, surely. I mean, what's your view to your wife's ambition? Good luck to her, basically. I mean, let her get on with it and do it. I'm not going to hold her back. Um, I hope she makes it. I mean, nobody's suggesting you're holding her back, but what are you doing to propel her forward? What am I doing to propel her forward? Oh, I do the cooking. As, I, as she says, I kick her out of bed on a Sunday morning when she won't. Not a lot more, though. To Barry Graham, another citizen of York, the marathon is a sprint. No one kicks him out of bed, he enjoys 50 kilometre race walking. Again, after foot slogging more than 100 miles a week, no ticket to LA. Barnsley's Jocelyn Hoyt Smith, one of Britain's best ever 400 metre runners. If it hadn't been for some confusion 10 years ago, perhaps Joss would have been off to LA as part of Wilf's gang. I've always waited for athletes to approach me, but there was at times when I feel that I could have given Jocelyn the right sort of advice that would have made her truly uh, world class. I'm not suggesting that she isn't now, but would have uh, made her uh, really in the top bracket. That's not been conceded at all because I think there was at one stage an area of her training that was neglected and that had she have put in that type of work at that time then I don't think there was anyone, certainly in the United Kingdom, would have, would have touched her because she is a very talented sprinter. I don't think he was good, he thought I was good enough when I was younger, um, when I was at school and the, the club that he coached in was basically all men and they didn't want any women in at the time and um, that's why I ended up in Barnsley. But um, I think if I was 15, 16, starting up again with the lads in Will's group, I could have a lot of fun with them, clean fun. But uh, it would be really good fun. I'd love to be in that group. That, from one of the sport's finest ambassadors, is possibly the greatest compliment to Wilf Pesch, an athlete's opinion. He may be a rebel to the officials and administrators of the sport, but he's a rebel with a cause. To his gang of athletes, he's the man they trust with their talent. I go back even more excited than I came out because I know the sort of things that they were doing, say, today at the end of two strenuous weeks. Now, that, the performances that they're putting in there are, are, are pretty fantastic. And I think that uh, we're going to have a tremendous squad there and that Yorkshire's going to be placed on the uh, Olympic map well and truly.
For Peter Elliott, Tessa Sanderson and Sue Morley, the next stop is Los Angeles. For the rest of the group, the consolation that at least they'll have three friends to cheer. And perhaps next time, it'll be their turn. Muchas gracias. Thanks for a wonderful trip. Cheers. Let's hope that all of the hard work, as well as the play, comes to fruition in LA. LA. LA.